Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. As you all probably know by now, the piano is one of the most versatile instruments of all time. It can play a bunch of genres, rock, pop, blues, jazz and the like, fusion, folk and so many more. In this lesson, I want to show that to you or demonstrate that to you by giving you an exercise which involves a different genre in each hand. So the left hand is going to play rock as you heard in the intro video and the right hand is going to play a bunch of pop sounding or very kind of catchy sounding melodies like what you heard in the intro video. And we are going to cap off the lesson with the famous chorus melody of the Incubus song Drive which kind of inspired this lesson as I was going along my routine of trying to brainstorm what I should teach you. Before we get started, just for your information, the entire left hand pattern as well as all the five right hand variations which I have for you or the right hand melody lines which I have for you are waiting for you on our Patreon page. You'll be able to download the staff notation as well as the MIDI files for the same. And it'll be great if you could also consider Consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So first off, I'm going to demonstrate the chord progression. All the chords hail from the G major scale or the E minor scale, which is its natural minor relative or E minor. So the chords would be E minor, B minor, C major, D major. You could probably just start playing it along with me. Get your keyboards out. You might want to pause the video, get the keyboards out and learn along. So E minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor. And as you can see, I'm using some nice inversions in the right hand just to get by. And to practice this exercise well, what you should also do is the timing of the chords is what I chose to be, I think, quite interesting. So E minor... B minor, C major, D major, E. What's happening there? Four, one, two, three, four. So it's an irregular change of chords. E minor for three counts, B minor for one, and C major for three counts, D major. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and that. Okay? And for the purpose of this lesson, we are going to play the chords in the left hand. So also get used to the same chords in the left hand. One, two, three, four, one. It's a very glam rock progression. One, two, three, four, one. Any kind of rock, actually. Two, three, four, one. So you may want to get this first. Two, three. Four, one, two, and then the left hand I am just playing it in root position. Okay? Four, one, two, three, four, one. Now the pattern in the left hand instead of just doing the rather boring. So I'm going to give you an arpeggio pattern over two levels of playing. The first level will not include the third of the chord. It will just be a power chord which is used a lot in rock songs. Stuff like that. Yeah. So many songs go with just power chords, right? So instead of playing it as a block power chord, we are going to arpeggiate it by playing the notes in a scattered pattern or in a one by one way. The second thing we are going to do to the arpeggio is retain the pattern but however make the chord to be the original triad but in open position. So let me first teach you that the way I am playing each of the four chords E minor, B minor this is in the power chord shape, C major in the power chord shape, D, A, D in the power chord shape. Let's do that together. E minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, B minor, C major. And another nice way to practice it could be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. You could probably look at this as a pattern on its own. Rather simple but still rock sounding I think. 1 and 2 and 
three and four and one and two and three and four and one. This is going to serve the foundation on top of which the right hand is going to play melodies. Okay, and then we learn the same chords. Let's try the same chords in the spread or the open position, so to speak. So instead of playing one, five, and eight, which is the octave on the top, I'm now doing. One, five, and ten. Ten would be basically the same third which you would normally play, but in the left hand, if you play the third together, closed up with the root and the fifth, it starts sounding very muddy, in my opinion, especially with the full band playing alongside you. So you'd want to add the third on top. This is what we call a spread or open voicing. A lot of which I've taught on our YouTube channel. We've even made a playlist on the same. We link it up in the description. So E minor. That's how E minor is. E B G. Then B minor. A, a, a rather stretchy kind of shape. B F sharp D. Then C major. C G. And then D major. Let's do that again. One and two and three and four and one. So a simpler pattern could be with the open. One and two and three and four and one and and three and four and right and two and three and four and one and two. You can even do this with the powers, three and four and two and three. So pretty sounds pretty much the same. Yeah. Of course, a lot more emotion will come when you spread it. Two and three and four. Okay, let's add something to this now. One and two and three and four and no breaks now. And three and four and all the beats are covered, right? And four and one and two. That's your left hand pattern, which we are going to do pretty much throughout the lesson. However, I have a really nice pattern which includes a little bit of sixteenth notes, which kind of emulates what a guitar player would do in any traditional rock context or alternative rock, glam rock, all kinds of rock. So the pattern would be something like din din ta ta ka din ta din 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 ta ta, and that's also a common drum groove. Doop doop ta ta ka doom ta. On the guitar, it'll go jing jing chang ka chang ka jum cham jum jum jum, and the chords are not going to change evenly. They will change at these irregular intervals. So let me try and play that pattern on the keys, and then try and teach you. So and uh, it'll go. So we are bringing in some sixteens: one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, again one E and a two E and a three E and a four. If you observe, I gave a gap at the on of the three that kind of allows you to move your hand to the next chord. Actually, I didn't do that. That's the pattern which I guess even guitar players do that so that they can kind of shift to the next chord easily. However, I think deep down it's a it's an awesome drum groove which all of us have stolen uh, from. So one and two. There we go. One and two. Dum 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 dum. At the very end of the bar, at the and four and, I'm playing B minor in spread position, pretty much how I taught you earlier. Earlier I did. Now we are just adding that sixteenth note embellishment. Making it more drum-like. Okay, so if you if you're finding it a stretch to go all the way to the third or the tenth interval on top, what you could end up doing is use the sustain pedal and. You can take away your pinky finger 
from the starting part, from the starting root of the chord and give yourself an additional maybe one inch or half an inch more uh, of width to access that G. But if your hand is also paining, if you have some kind of a wrist issue or if you are a kid watching this video and you still want to play along, you probably can't stretch out your hand so much. Uh, it, it will take you some time but you can still prepare for that when the time comes of course, when your hands get bigger and your you get bigger in general. Until then, you can just play the fifth chord pattern in the same 16th note vibe. With power chords. So E minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor. B minor, C major, D major. If you can stretch, to the third, well and good. As you can see, it's the same rhythm, it's the same hit points, it's just more harmonic because of the stretch to the third. Let's look at power chords as well in the same pattern. You could also toggle between the two patterns. Okay, so that's all about the left hand done and dusted left hand over now in the right hand i've i've composed four melodies which i think you'll enjoy and the fifth melody is going to be the incubus song so stay tuned till the very end we're going to learn a lot of melodies now in the right hand and to approach this hand independence if you want to call it that between the left hand and the right hand the best way is to just drill your left hand and get it in a very muscle memory kind of way so that anything you play in the right hand should just happen. You should not even think that your left hand is even doing anything, you know. Yes, you may find, you may feel the burn of the left hand because it's a physical workout on your forearm, your wrist and fingers, of course. You will feel the burn, but as you can see, as I'm talking to you also, I've developed the independence to talk to you and play the piano, which I think is a bit tougher. At least I think it's a bit tougher than even playing a melody or singing a melody. But the idea here is whatever melody you have in front of you in the notation, you're, you're going to need to first sing it. We'll sing it together and then we will try and execute it in the right hand. And after I or while I played in the right hand, I'm also going to help you with the fingering for the same. Watch out for the fingering and the alignment also you need to perhaps check. See, there are two ways to develop independence. One is you drill the left hand to be so confident or so... Uh, comfortable that you don't even know what it's doing. It's just, uh, it's it's just an instinct. It just happens, and then you you're giving your conscious brain not one hundred percent of its uh, uh, effort, but at least ninety percent of its effort to play the melody in the right hand. So that's pretty much the idea. The second way of looking at independence, which sometimes works but sometimes can be a bit stressful would be where you align the notes together. You you have the staff notation, this is where reading comes into play. You have the right hand in the treble clef, you have the left hand in the bass clef, and you actually physically see with your eyes, oh, at three, uh, at the uh of the three, there is some kind of a interaction, or the two hands are playing together, while at the end of the four, the, the, the left hand and the right hand are not playing together. There could be a uh, rest at the four or something like that. So let me now bring you to the melodies. And the first melody would be, I'll play it with a simple pulse so you get the feel of it. La 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 Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
ta ta ra ta ra 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 and i'm now singing this with my left hand pattern and then we get it so instead of playing this c i would recommend you to play the higher e as mentioned in the notation because otherwise the two hands will start fighting with each other so e d e f sharp e d e d e b a f sharp e d fingering what do we do you can start with your middle finger that will work pretty well and then pinky for the b uh you can even start with your in index finger on e come to think of it i kind of prefer the middle finger slight stretch only the melody with the left power chords of course going on now tens spread chords to kind of remember this is to actually listen to me playing it don't focus your entire attention to just reading the notes okay you can listen to me playing it you can also download the uh, midi files and the notation and play it and get to listen to it so listen and see don't only see some of you some of us are more comfortable with notation i understand but with notation you're looking at the stuff you're not See, you're not hearing it and thus you're not feeling it if you ask me hearing in music is feeling seeing i don't know how you can really feel it when you see it you're just observing okay what is the note how long is the note and when is the note occurring pretty much okay so let's move on to melody number 2 so melody number 2 includes a nice stream of eighth notes and at the end i have a 16th note run Okay, let's do that. I'll sing it first. La ra ta ra ta ra 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 ta ra ta ra ta ra ri ra ru ru ra ra ri ra ta ra ta ra ta ra ta ra ta ra 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 ta ra ti ra ru 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 ra 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 ri ra ta ra ti ra 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 ta ra first bar. La ra ti ra ra ta ra 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 ti. So it ends with that da 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 eight sixteen notes. Let's get that on the keys. I'm trying it first with block chords: E, E minor, E, B minor, C major, D. Let's work on our fingering, and and after we get the fingering, we can then bring back our original pattern. Now when you do the semi quaver run I think you have to start the run with your middle finger and when you cross to the D you cross your thumb under Again Again That's your first bar let's get that together slowly And now next bar, na 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 na, cross the thumb. Na 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 spread chords coming back in the left hand
very slowly. One more time. So that's melody number two. Let's move on to the third melody. Basically, the challenge will be very similar. Your independence has the same kinds of notes, but I've made it a bit longer. I've made it a four bar melody instead of a two bar melody. So let's learn melody three. I'll first play it with the block chords. Let's just do the first two bars. La, 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 la. That's your semi quaver flourish. La. So you start with a higher E. E, e B, A, E, B, A. You come down to the lowest E, high E, E, B, A, D. Ta -da 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 -da. Second, uh, third bar and fourth bar I'm playing now. E, B, B, E, E, C, B, F sharp, E, B, B, E, E, C, B, F sharp, E, E, B, A, G, A, B, G, F sharp, E, B, B, E, E, C, B, F sharp, E. Let's bring back our left hand pattern now with power chords. Singing is very important. You'll get the alignment between your hands a lot better if you sing the melody, which means you need to have the knowledge of the melody, so to speak. La, 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 la. Ta -da 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 -da. You can also tackle this melody in smaller pockets. So. me some time so what I did was I just kept kind of looping just that bar you can even go back to the simpler pattern we discussed earlier you know then maybe and then maybe bring back the 16th note flavor let's try that now with spread voice sing go taught you the fingering yet so pinky and thumb and with your middle that's your semi quaver run you may you want to cross that middle finger there was melody 3 let's move on to the fourth melody in this melody there's a pickup so i'm going to start my melody first and then the chords will take over so pam 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 pa and then the song begins so 
Let me break it down bar by bar now with block chords in the left hand. So it starts at 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 pam 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 pa pero pe pam pam tare ru 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 pam pam tera tan 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 pam pam pa re ru 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 tan tan tero pero pe pam pero re ru 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 pam tero ra ra tan tan ro pam pam pa tera tan tan ra tum tum and i'm also playing the chords as a pulse the pulse is essentially how your head or your body or the listener would move naturally to the flow of the songs important to play whatever it is you're playing first of all with the pulse that is really important pam pam pa re ru 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 b minor c major d e minor na na ta te ru ra ta bring in our uh, left hand pattern now to play the melody okay again let's start spread spread chords try to move freely to the pulse it's okay if you make it's okay if you make mistakes but moving to the pulse will ensure that you are on time and has ensured and will ensure that your independence will be uh, steady as well Okay so I thought we'll do one final melody which is the song which kind of inspired this lesson or maybe a few similar songs it's drive by incubus so we'll just play the chorus melody I suggest you listen to the song it's a really nice rock song one of the hits of the 90s Whatever tomorrow brings I'll be there with open arms and open eyes Yeah. Okay. Let's break that whole thing down. So we'll do our usual block chords in the left. The challenge here is you have to start at the end of the two. One and whatever tomorrow brings I'll be there. You can probably till you get the chord shifting, you can just start with one chord. With a pulse. So one and and three and tomorrow brings i'll be there with open arms with open eyes yeah whatever ta na 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 ta na 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 now let's do it with the changes e minor B min C D It's It's a four bar tune one
back our favorite pattern let's just revise it before the melody comes so keep the drums also with you in fact if you listen to this song the drummer itself in the incubus drive song will inspire you greatly just chose in the chorus but you you get the idea you can do the other parts as, as well so slow it down bring back the the spread chords Let's just recap the video. We've done a very rock piano arpeggio pattern in the left hand with power chords, with also spread chords, and we've done five melodies. Let's break them down. Melody three. Melody four, which which starts at the pickup. of course in cubes is drive right guys hope you found the lesson useful and we have a lot of other hand independence exercises concepts methods and you know ways of approaching the subject of hand independence that's probably the most commonly practiced thing on the piano because it's it's the one instrument where it's almost drum like in nature your right hand and your left hand can do completely different things and in this lesson i wanted to show you that it can also do completely different genres if you look at the melody it's quite pop all of them are very pop melodies and the left hand continue to play a rock pattern so uh, try to work on your independence watch our playlist on hand independence um we also have a structured learning process to develop all this from almost ground zero you can consider our foundation programs which include theory ear training and those are structured lessons which you will find on our website nathanielschool.com you can see the link in the description as well and uh, don't forget to get yourselves a copy of the staff notation and the midi tracks which will be available on our patreon page and there's a subscribe button thanks for watching the lesson but uh, we'll definitely feel your thanks a lot more if you press that button right now and there's a bell icon too as we release regular content so you will get notifications in Uh, whenever we release our daily videos right guys thanks a ton for watching cheers see you in the next one